Hi everyone, it is Mirik Abundant. Welcome back to another food diary of 365 food diaries in this year for you guys to know how I developed in the last year from quasi to real recovery. Do not fret, I do change uh, my clothes every day. You will just have to deal with me wearing the same sweater um, in every video or like most of the times because my favorite sweater, but do not fret, I do have different clothes underneath every day so just saying um, in this video we're going to go into um, the things that popped up in my mind from my eating disorder because my fingers um, had swelled up like the children's Raynaud syndrome which made me panic and made me google and research and obsess and overthink about everything that I could change about my diet and totally running into the wrong direction um which uh, i kind of deep inside knew this is the wrong way to go but i felt it was just sufficiently justified for me to do that because you know the eating disorder um anorexia is actually something that just have you know was just there mentally to help me survive so it felt justified to do that what you're seeing here right now on the screen is what i ate exactly one year ago i share this every day so if these if you want to really recovery and step from quasi to re-recovery my videos might, might very much help you this year if you watch them daily because i show you every kind of little step that i took in order to get closer to real recovery. So what you're seeing here is not real recovery, um, but still, you know, I was eating the minimum guidelines of Minimod. Also here for dinner, I added bread, which you also know I challenged the days before, if you saw them, the videos. And you know, bread is just, you know, more processed, salt, you don't, necessarily know what's exactly in there and it's you know a flour product a bake bake it good and whatever and um if i had it done in real recovery i would have just eaten so much bread in one sitting because i just craved it so much not all of these veggies and the water rich rice and stuff and and i would have of course put also butter on it or maybe as a first step margarine because it's vegan and then um you know in real recovery I now use and I have been using um, in real recovery the real butter just to um, completely lose that fear of it. So you're going to see here the Google site, like the websites I was searching for, like what could be going on with my fingers. This post was from um, caffeine, like I was just worried that it's something that is, it has something to do with caffeine. Then here, um, the pH of the urine, where I found out, oh, could it be acidosis? Could it be eating too much protein or fats? And could it be gout, like, you know, or arthritis related? Um, I mean, so these things that you're seeing here, this is also like nutritional yeast, yeast in general, that that could be an issue for people. Um, you know, have, you have to eat um, alkaline forming foods as much as possible. And, you know, like the urine pH, I got into urine pH there very much. Also urine filtration later, Dr. Moore's detoxification, you're going to see that. I just completely got into a wrong direction in my recovery kind of got away from recovery um, here again yeast um, articles about gout I mean you can pause and read through these but I want you to know s one thing and that is that this is not something I would recommend you to actually follow or think that this is the, um, the, the ultimate thing to do because there's so much information on the internet and so much is fear-mongering um, yeah, like uric acid, I got into the kidney thing, like that there could be something, um, like my kidneys could be over challenged, that's when my fingers swell up and there's deposits and calcium deposits and whatnot in my fingers. Again, um, 
I now know that that is not the case. It's actually because I was under eating. It's actually because of the restrictive eating disorder and my eating disorder made it uh, like uh, it kind of made me believe that, well, it could just as well also have to do with my diet. I'm not eating healthily enough, like still not eating healthy enough. And I'm just going to, I don't know, I feel like I'm yellow, whatever. Um, yeah, so I mean, you can read through this, through these, but if you are, believe me, it had nothing to do with what was going on with my fingers and it will, let me say 100%, but just for the correctness, I'm just going to say 99% will not have to do with any kind of symptoms you are having. Your symptoms, if you are watching my videos, are... I just having to do with you having been restricting and uh, malnourished and you might not feel like you're malnourished because you don't feel underweight or whatever, or whatever. but in the end um, you are still eating not enough for your um, body. As long as you're restricting, even just mentally, even if you're at a normal kind of BMI weight, that is not enough energy for your body. and. Um, that's also not physical and or mental recovery. So I'm just showing you these screenshots that I went through on exactly that day one year ago. That is why I'm showing you these screenshots right now in this video. Um, it was something that I was obsessively getting into on in these days. Specifically, particularly on this day, it was actually at 4 a.m. I was not being able to sleep. And that is also because I was under eating. I was not in re-recovery. I was eating the minimum, uh, mini mod guidelines, but not enough for recovery. I like experienced extreme hunger, also experienced mental hunger, but was not responding to it in the way I should. You know, I was not treating the minimum um, as a minimum, but kind of like a maximum even. And so I was afraid to eat too much, but also was afraid to eat too little. And that is the recovery trap there. And I know that many of you guys are in the situation. I just want to encourage you to get out of this and do it real, for real. So yeah, these are all about purines and like gout and you know, that it can have something to do with deposits being deposited in your fingers and stuff. And I just kind of lost myself in this, in these things and also, Dr. McDougall articles, which are also going to get more like into the, the next screenshot now. This one, like how low fat, how low protein should I eat if I have problems with gout and purines and stuff. And he says you have to keep it maximum 5 to 10 percent of fats. And so that's where my penny came in. Oh, wow, I might eat too many proteins and fats and just like, wow. OK, fast forward to one week ago. This is some just some fun thing from David and me. <laughs> okay, that's how crazy we are. We were just uh, like, uh, um, uh, how, do you know when you get this when you touch each other? I don't know. Okay. Um, the greatest skill you can have as a human. And the idea that came to my head was the greatest skill you're going to have as a human is being able to do something that's good for you even when you don't feel like it. And so I find that things that are good for me feel hard in the beginning, but feel great afterwards. And things that are bad for me feel easy in the beginning, but they are really bad for me afterwards. And so I want you to know that's exactly what's happening with recovery. The worse it feels, the, the worse it feels in the moment and in the beginning, the better it, it will be for you afterwards. Okay, and do not take this the wrong way and say, well, of course, I'm going to exercise a lot because I'm going to feel great afterwards or I'm going to restrict and then I will be skinny and then I will feel great afterwards. No, um, I mean this in recovery. Like, also, I was here while preparing. I started singing and that's also something I did not do one year ago. I just lost my singing kind of, but singing is my soul. And so I was, practicing I was practicing one song for the band practice worship team practice in the evening because I was leading worship next Sunday which you're going to see
okay just random but it's really it has to do with recovery for me because i lost just spontaneously singing because it was so rigid in my mind and thinking and just tense all of the time okay another post of one of my favorite uh, instagram accounts yes eating disorder thoughts can be eradicated and this post is specifically one that i would like you to check out from her page um, just look it up it actually just kind of summarizes a uh, a day of her doing full recovery and like um, yeah full day of recovery eating and that's very much how a full day of my recovery eating looked like very much like this very like of course not exact but like no like actually 100 percent exactly like this but of course every day would change it this is just like an example of how she did it but um because so many people have been asking me um so what did a day in recovery look like for you and this is practically the answer like when i started extreme hunger re-recovery um yeah that was it <laughs> yeah pretty much exactly the same um someone so she's saying that 90 percent of her eating was driven by mental hunger and that's exactly how it was by me in my um experience in real recovery without mental hunger i would not have recovered um, so these are just some impressions of what i ate um, a week ago now in real recovery, I do eat snacks, I do eat cakes and chocolates and uh, crisps. I get comments that um, some of you, like it's hard for you to believe that I do eat these things. Believe me or not, but your metabolism will catch up. You will not gain weight forever. I thought that too, but it stopped at some point and I still eat all of these foods that I, um, you know, ate when I started recovery. These were some, um, bars granola bars here that i had um before practice band practice and um what i want to say i actually i actually forgot what i wanted to say <laughs> okay i hope you enjoy this video if you do then please give this a thumbs up and leave me your comments below so i know what is up like what you are thinking about. And I see you next video. Bye.